Well, uh, hello everybody. Thank you very much to the to the team that gives us uh, this opportunity. I'm David Dibo. I'm actually the ma manager of the Healthy and Sustainable Ingredients uh, in Borges, a Spanish company. And today we'll be presenting a little bit of better understanding of the saturated fats, specifically in the bakery industry, why we are using them and how are they affecting us. Uh, and this is our presentation for the Bakery Life 2023. Well, at the beginning, as I said, uh, we will be speaking about specifically the saturated fats uh, because they are really common in the bakery industry. They are present in, in pastries and cakes. And we question ourselves when we were developing our projects, why are they being used and how do they affect our health? So. In this presentation, uh, we will see uh, different ways of the functionalities that these kind of fats uh, gave us, okay, in these kind of products, and what can they be occasionating in our health in terms of, um, of different uh, casualties. So, first of all, we need to understand what are saturated fats, okay? Saturated fats. They are typically, typically said uh, fat that it's solid at room temperature. Okay, uh, the most old one and the most traditional one is the one that we can find in the animal fats, uh, in dairy when we made the butter and in some kinds of meats. Okay, in other, in a more recent uh, era, uh, we have some uh, saturated fats in plant based, such as palm oil, coconut oil, she butter, this kind of products that if we mm, segregate them and we separate the olein from the stearine, then we have a saturation enough uh, to keep it solid at room temperature. Then uh, we need to understand that these saturated fats, not the fat itself, but the saturation of it, uh, it's linked to some uh, heart uh, disease. Uh, it's very extended, this that the high consumption of these kind of products uh, increase the LLD, LDL sorry, uh, cholesterol levels. And this uh, is part of the, a big part of the heart uh, disease problems that we have in our society. So of course, the, the, the first that came to your mind is, okay, I will not consume that. But in the end, in, and later in this presentation, we will see why we will keep consuming these kind of products. Uh, finally, just to clarify, saturated means that the carbon molecules of the sat, uh, the, the fat, uh, the fat product are completely occupied by hydrogens, and this is what the terminology of saturation came from. Okay, uh, here uh, we will be reproducing uh, the recipe of making uh, some cookies. Okay while I keep explaining you a little bit, uh, why are they being used, okay? So, okay, in the bakery products, the main usage of uh, different saturated fats, it could be palm oil, margarine, uh, an hydrogenated uh, canola, margarine, butter, or some other alternatives, okay? The main focus of these ingredients is to give mouthfeel, a fatty mouthfeel in our mouth, and the texture that we want in the product. So we want that this product melts in our mouth, not before that, not in the package, that we can store that for longer periods of, of time. So that's also affecting the shelf life. And that's what saturated fats gives us, okay? But in terms of specifically functionality, the mouthfeel and the texture are the, are the kings here. Okay, because uh, for example, butter uh, is very popular in terms of the, the creamy flavor, the firm texture that it gives. Okay, then palm margarines are more in the industrial side of the of the industry. Okay, so not not so in the small bakeries, more in the very big uh, industrial bakeries, and uh, because of mainly because of its uh, cheaper price. Uh, so these are the main uh, objectives that we want to this product 
add to our to our final products. In this case, as you could see in the recipe, some cookies that we made. So the texture, the firmness, the hardness, the, the biting uh, sensation, the mouthfeel that we will get is a big part of it, thanks to the, the fat addition that, as you could see through the recipe, is quite a large amount that we use in this kind of recipes. At the end of the presentation, you will see a little bit of a surprise about the recipes that you are seeing here. Okay, if we keep going, then we will use the same, but with the different kind of products inside of the bakery, uh, we will be speaking about the pastry ones. These ones that keep some air inside of them that we can see very clearly, different layers, different spots and, and, and holes inside of it, like the croissants, the proof pastry, laminates, It's a very different kind of uh, products, but are also in the bakery. But they are really, really depending on the on the saturated fats, and that's why because we use fat in two main occasions uh, during the process. Right now, we are seeing in the video we add some fat in the dough preparation. Okay, during the dough we need to add some fat. Then you, of course, you work with the dough, you prepare them, and once you have the dough. Then you have to go to the second part of the fabrication of these kind of products, products, and it's the lamination one. Okay. See what we are seeing in the video is what gives us the elasticity enough to um, overcome the process that we are going to see in the video. Here you have the dough, okay, and then you have to do the integration of the second round of the fat that is for the lamination. What means lamination? The lamination means that we are going to, to put fat between the different dough layers that these products have. And the objective of that is, is to, when we bake this product, that the different layers are able to separate from each other. So that's what fat is giving us. In order to achieve that, we need the saturated fats because we need that this fat is hard enough to overcome the, the process that we are seeing, the, the kind of manipulation that we are seeing, and also that the fat only melts during the baking process. So we need that this to keep inside of the dough. It is not possible to achieve this kind of products with uh, liquid oil or something softer because it will be um, getting out of the date that we are producing uh, during the process. And it will, of course, uh, if some of, of you tried it, it will generate a, a mess, okay? Here, as you can see, we are generating the layers inside of the pastry, okay? In this case, is a specific recipe of croissants. Um, and now we will see how, uh, let me stop it just for a second. As you can see into, uh, until now, what we did is to prepare the dough, to introduce the fat in order to laminate it, then we have been working with the dough and the fat together to make it thinner and to be able to generate more and more layers, okay? You cannot see it here clearly, but here already are like 20 or 50 layers inside of it, okay? Now we will go to the second part of it, where the fat is also important because you need a fat that is hard enough and flexible enough to let you manipulate these pieces of bakery that you have generated. Here we are formatting the croissants, as you can see, very, very easy to recognize these shapes, right? <coughs> and now you will see the final process of the, pro of, of the production of this. Here we, of course, need to ferment a little bit these, uh, these croissants for a couple of hours. And here, what you are seeing is the air inside of them, okay? When you have this air, the fat is key because it what helps the croissant to keep the shape somehow. In the end, you will see that, of course, the baking process is like uh, in, in any other baking product, depending the time, the temperature, and so on. And here you, we will see the final part of the video where we... Uh, I, I will show you at the end of the presentation uh, why we made so much croissants and what's the difference between them, okay? But here you could see uh, very nice looking croissants.
And yes, just a few seconds to the final presentation. Here there are. OK, keep in mind this image because we will see something like that later. OK, seeing that we have been speaking about the functionality, what we are looking from them, but of course, uh, saturated fats, fats, sorry, uh, they are also are always controversial. OK, they are always in the in the in the A of the hurricane because it is healthy, it is not healthy, it is needed for me. OK, what are the pros? The pros are mainly in the part of the of their physical properties. They give mouthfeel, they give texture, they are solid at room temperature, they melt at most temperature. Uh, they are easy to manipulate at industrial scale. So that made us to be more, to have more productivity in our uh, factories, right? We are able to produce faster because this saturation of the fat, this hardness, lets us to improve the speed of our machines. Of course, they are available in big quantity. This is also important because if you want to use, for example, olive oil, there is not enough to, to supply in the in the same terms of the palm oil, for example, or the butter. And of course, they have a reasonable price. In the other side, we have the cons of saturated fat. They are very directly uh, related to the heart disease and other health problems like the overweight. And somehow, sometimes uh, they are related with um, diabetes type 2. Uh, also, then there is a very big controversial uh, topic. Also, is the deforestation that some of them, mainly the plant-based palm, cocoa, coconut, shibata, that the deforestation that they occasionate in the environment. Okay, of course, already exists some of, uh, let's say, the RSPOs, no, the the palms that are uh, considered like. Um, uh, sustainable, okay, but we we all know that uh, we have already uh, destroyed a part of a uh, natural forest to produce that. Of course, the cholesterol is already uh, it's like the main spot that affects our health problems related to heart disease. Uh, okay, it's a very cardiovascular risk. And finally, the animal origin. Some of the saturated fats that we have seen, like butter, they are animal origin, and we all know that the animal origin products are more and more in, a, in, a, in, in the bad part of the, the equation, and we want to avoid them. So this also an impact on the saturated fats. In summary of that, uh, both the animal origin and the, and the plant-based have their pros and cons, of case. Uh, at the end, what we need is to choose one of them in order to accomplish the kind of product that we want to give to the market, and of course, uh, with the with the needs that we need to accomplish with that. Here is a little bit of the explanation of how do they affect our health. No, the LDL that we were mentioning, we have we can see here clearly in the picture that it's a kind of fat cholesterol that it keeps um, accumulating in our in our veins and our arteries. OK, mainly in the arteries uh, that what this makes is that um, interrupts the correct flow of our blood through the vessels. Right. So there is a lot of studies that confirm that. And also there are a lot of studies that say that the polyunsaturated fats, like, like the ones that came from uh, vegetable oils, such as uh, sunflower oil or olive oil, they are helping us to improve this situation. Uh, and of course, this is, uh, I mean, this problem is representative because we are increasing more and more the kind of these pastries that we consume. And this is logic because as a human being, we like the fatty, the sweetie, uh, this kind of taste. We love them because uh, for our brain, that means survival, right? So. Uh, we have to be realistic. They will keep their presence in our diets. So what are we proposing? We're proposing to keep these products, but in a healthier way. No? That's why we think that uh, there must be some alternative. And one of them, for example, 
is uh, what we propose from Borges, that is a 100% sunflower oil uh, without a hydrogenation product that performs like uh, like the butter, like the palm fat, like the margarines, okay? Uh, we did the same recipe that you've seen in the video uh, before with butter, with palm, with a margarine based in pine, and finally with our product, okay? The idea was to get exactly or the most closest possible product uh, with the same characteristics in terms of mouthfeel, in terms of texture, in terms of uh, taste, okay? And also shelf life. And what we could see is that we are able to keep these products healthier. I mean, we can keep them in the shelf, okay? As you can see, we also, uh, we can keep them in the shelf on the supermarkets, but we need to keep them in a healthier manner, right? So we also did some cookies that you also did, you also seen the video. And finally, we also prepared some muffins. So as you can see, depending on the recipe, of course, but we can reduce a lot the, the, the quantity of saturated fats per portion of these kind of products. As you can see, we are around of the 50% in terms of the cookies, about 50% of the on the muffins, and about uh, 20 between 20 and 30% uh, in the in the croissants. Okay, so well, it in the end it surprised us quite a lot because the products were like the same. Uh, they were exactly the same. They taste the same. They were exactly the same crunchiness, okay? But at the end, you have the same product that you always know, but in a vegan way and also healthier than the, the options before that. So in conclusion, what we are saying, okay, we need to understand that these products will still be part of our life, but since there are some alternatives and now that we understand better the goods and the bad things of the saturated fats, uh, we think that it's important to try to choose the healthiest ones in order to keep having the pleasure that these kind of products allow us to have in our diets, right? And this ha and these little moments of pleasure that we have in our life. So this is our point of view of this topic. And it's been a pleasure to be with you today. And thank you very much again for your attendance and to the team for the organization. Thank you very much. David for taking the time to speak at Bakery Live. I just wanted to um, hear from you why you wanted to speak on this topic in particular. What made you decide talking about fact functional fats? Yes, of course. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Uh, well, I wanted to have uh, to highlight this topic because uh, from our perspective in the Mediterranean life, okay, to keep uh, a nutritious and also uh, healthier but in both cases tasty diet uh, it's important okay so you have to find the right balance between eating things that are sweet tasty even fatty okay but there is a mix between the amount that you are eating and the quality of you are eating and if the products are more in a high standard of quality then you can eat a little bit of more amount of it okay so our company is uh, a traditional expertise, okay, in the oils. And for us, uh, the evolution of the traditional olive oil and, and sunflower oil was, okay, how can we help the people that is using less healthy fats to keep eating the same, but in our, from our point of view, okay, the, the, the people that make flour can work from the flour option, okay, but we from the fat, okay, let's, Let's see how we can generate a new generation fat that allows the people to keep eating the traditional products, what they are used to, but 
in a healthier way. That's why we wanted to highlight the saturated fats importance. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good point about making a product that's healthier but still tastes the same. I imagine you don't want to eat a pastry that doesn't have that same kind of crunch. There's certainly a lot of conversation about healthy eating in fats. Do you think um, from the point of view of a bakery, whether they could reduce the level of fat they use? Or do you think that's quite challenging because they might not achieve the same product? I think it's very linked with, with what you said. I mean, if you reduce the amount of fat just by uh, using the same fat and you reduce the amount, then you are changing the recipe. And it's mm, very probable, it, it, you have a high probability that the final result is not exactly the same. Okay. So that's why we wanted to, in our case, for example, to offer an ingredient that allows you to put exactly the same recipe that you are using set, uh, always, but the result is the same but healthier. Okay, it's it's this is our uh, value offer in this case. But regarding the question that you are making me, if you only reduce the fat, we already have some products in the in the market that apply this strategy, and the final uh, result is like it's less juicy in your bite, it's less crunchy. Uh, I mean, the product changes. Okay, it's it's a new product. It's not the same with less fat. It's a new product. It's okay. So I imagine um, your new product, the one that you mentioned in your presentation, yeah. was inspired about inspired by healthy eating, wanting to create a product that tastes good but is healthier. Did you experience any challenges in its creation or any, um, you know, you you tested it and the product didn't come out the way you expect? Were there any challenges? Of course, you don't have, you don't, you cannot imagine how much uh, we have worked with this product, product because as you can imagine, at the beginning you have to patent when you have the idea and the first prototype, we patent it. And then you need to try and try and try again uh, and convince someone to let him to let you try in the industrial scale to do a lot of sales we are quite proud that we are uh, increasing our sales year by year and we are uh, having more adepts okay in the bakery and outside the bakery applications because we are also in the meat alternative and uh, in the snacks okay with the same uh, idea not the same recipe because this product is not a fat by itself this is a technical solution that mimics the results that the saturated fat gives you in a in a final product, right? But if you have two ounces of uh, each product in your hand, uh, they will look the same. But when you apply them, you get the same results. This is, this is our idea of what we came during the process. But yes, it's been really challenging and we are really proud of the success that we are being having lately. Uh, into different companies that they try, they apply it. Sometimes you have to adjust the process because, of course, it's 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 like a tailor-made uh, technical solutions. But they are tweaks just to the process of shortening the process or enlarging the process. It depends. But yes, it's it's a quite interesting product. Sure. And and on that note, one final question: When you tested the product with bakeries. Um, obviously, you know, the consumer's thinking about the mouthfeel, the texture, the flavour. What did you find bakeries were asking for when they were testing out the fat? What were they looking for? You know, like a quicker process? Was that a big focus? Yeah. The first focus that we found was, first, it must taste good. I mean, it must change the slightly as possible the taste of my actual product. So, what we decide in these terms is to make our product as neutral as possible, so just the margarines that are typically um, neutral, or we can flavorize our product, so just if, if it has a better taste, okay? First one was the, the, the taste. They, the, the, the product needs to be, and the final product, the croissant, needs to not be affected by a change of the fat. This was the first one. Then they were a lot focused in the productivity. They need to be able to only change the fat and keep processing. Okay, this was something that was really challenging. 
and we are really proud of the final results that we got. And of course, the last one, if you have the first two, you have quite a triumph card, but the third one, and really important also, is the price. Of course, uh, with this product, we understand that we are giving an extra value. We are uh, selling a product that is healthier, that it uh, it's more sustainable because it's uh, we guarantee that the crops are from nearby our uh, facilities. Uh, so we are not uh, we have not a so high carbon print. There also it's a, a process a, a product that that came from a different harvesting, that it's not in tropical areas and you didn't deforestate anything to produce that. So, well, it has so different inputs that makes this product, product basically healthier and more sustainable than the actual alternative in the market. But of course, it has some price. And we are working a lot to reduce the difference between the traditional alternative. We are day by day closer to that but we are still a little bit uh, expensive than, the, for example, a uh, palm margarine. Yeah, well, I, I imagine it's it's very difficult to create something that's healthy, affordable, sustainable, yeah. efficient. I, I think um, it's, it's fantastic to hear that you've managed to uh, create something that is healthy and that will meet that kind of demand. So thank you so much for your time today, David, for talking to me and speaking at Bakery Live. Thank you very much for the invitation, Kathleen.